Josh Mathis, Cyborg Octopus, amongst many other things. How you doing, man? It's nice to see you. I'm great. How are you? <clears throat> oh, I'm doing all right. Things could be worse. So, Josh, you guys were just, Cyborg Octopus was just on tour. Tell me yeah. about that experience, man. Uh, it was a good time. It was uh, it was just a little run. I think it was like how many days did we do? Six. I think it was five or six days. Uh, did Reno, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle. So yeah, four days. Um, it was good. Uh, had a really good experience. The the Sa- San Francisco show uh, was our best merch night ever as a band. I think we yeah we sold like I think like fourteen hundred dollars worth of merch that night. It was crazy. Um, yeah, it was wild. Um, Reno, we didn't do as well, but it was still like did really really well. Uh, Portland, we played with you guys, which was awesome. Um, reunite, hang out a little bit. Uh, it was it was weird not like watching Jordan set up another set of drums before the show. <laughs> uh, met your new bass player. I don't know if he's a new bass player or just uh, the bass player, but he was he was a nice kid. Yeah, Justice is a nice guy, dude. And it was yeah. a good time. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you guys, it was awesome, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any uh, the port the Portland shows, it's always it's always either get mad or nobody else. <laughs> That's right, exactly. And speaking of what your guys' live show, dude, obviously your guys' music's killer. Afterburner was the single that you guys put out. That's yeah. a great tune. You yeah, guys are an awesome, awesome man. And Thanks, like, man. no, no problem, dude. And like, one thing I got to say is. The music serious stuff. You guys are all excellent musicians, but your stage presence is not a serious thing. You actually look like you're enjoying yourself. Talk about the conscious decision in a genre of music. That's <laughs> nothing but nerds and tough guys. Why can't yeah. just be yours? Be something different. Why? Why did? How did that happen? Um, our our general uh, our like if if there was such thing as like a band motto is we're basically just making fun of bands that take shit too seriously. Um, like. We'll, we help each other on stage and shit like that. We'll pretend we're eating each other's asses. It's 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 just a wild experience. Um, most of the most of the set seems like it's Bobby and Patrick and Max trying to get me to break and lose focus while I'm playing. Um, so that's been fun to navigate for nine years. But <laughs> it's uh, yeah, man. We just we just try to have fun, man. We're not trying to be tough guys. We're not. Uh, we kind of know that. Uh, like I'm the biggest dude in our band and I'm just a fat guy. So like we don't we don't get to be tough. So we're just not the tough guys. We're just we're there to have fun and have a good time. That's that's really all it is. Well, that's cool, man, because it definitely reflects, you know, you guys are absolutely enjoying what you're doing. And that always makes the music better and it's cool. And you know, uh talk about your guys' newest uh release. Like, how long was the writing process for that? Were you guys actually rehearsing that? Because you live in Reno, don't you? So it's probably yeah. kind of kind of a deal where you guys are sending files back and forth or do you guys get together and jam at all or is it only before you guys tour yeah so this was the first time that i've actually used guitar pro to learn songs um generally i've always been just like a listen to the song over and over again I, like chunk it like go like 20 second parts learn 20 seconds at a time or whatever um this time bobby sent me all the guitar pro files and it was uh i don't know if i'll ever do it a, a different way again because it's just so easy um I was, st- I was still teaching at the time too. So it was like, it was basically just like, I went to work and then it was just, it was just like catching me up to, cause I haven't, I'd read music in a long time since probably like 2010 where I've actually had to read sheet music and it just, it's so easy, dude. It's so much easier. It was, it was great. Um, but yeah, so I live in Reno. All those guys live in the Bay. Um, uh, a, f- a funny story about right before that tour. Um, there was some miscommunication on my part on what time I was going to be there for rehearsal. I ended up getting there at like 1130 at night. <laughs> and uh, this is for Max because uh, I know he's going to rage when he sees this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I ended up showing up super late because I had to work and all this stuff. And it was just a really long day. Uh, but that was the first time we had played Afterburner or uh, Dream Killer together. And that was two days before our first show or one day before our first show. That's just generally how we, we just kind of trust each other to stay on top of it and make sure that um, our parts are locked in. I felt, I honestly felt like I wasn't as ready as I should have been for that run. Um, I just had so much other shit going on, but 
I think we did okay. I, I don't think that I uh, I fumbled too bad, especially with the new songs. It was really what I was worried about because Dream Killer is 250, so it's it's one of our fastest songs we've ever written. Um, so it like forced me to kind of figure out some new hand techniques that I needed to. Uh, you can't just power through with your wrists anymore when you're going that fast. <laughs> no, it's all it's all about finesse at that speed, man. Like mm -hmm. you know, being comfortable, all that stuff we all know about. But so. You know, when you're playing with people that are, you know, professional level dudes and like you, you have the luxury of going, I can rely on this person to do their job. Yeah. And, you know, that's and that's huge because, you know, I think most bands are probably like that are like that now where not everybody lives in the same town. Yep. You know what I mean? And bringing in more technology into it, like Guitar Pro, how awesome is it to be able to actually see what you're what you're playing to versus, you know, uh, just going through it a million times trying to figure out exactly what you want to play where you can actually yeah. see it. And if you can, you know, notate it all, Oh, you know, just a rough idea, you know, it probably helps a lot, especially like doing drums, man. For sure. Especially with like pr the progressive, uh, progressive metal, I guess is what people like to call us is, uh, Bobby writes very weirdly. Like he'll write like an eleven sixteen measure or, and all this random stuff. And it's, if it's fucking impossible to figure out what it is, unless you can actually see it. Right. And, uh, like there's a there's a couple of song there's a song on the on the new record that closes that's uh it goes from like a ten eight to a six four to a ten eight to a six four over and over and over again and I just I would I would have never known <laughs> unless I had actually seen the sheet music so it's like really good for when there's a lot of time signatures within a song it's really really good for that like hearing the hearing the notes is easy but it's like knowing exactly what's going through Bobby's head when he's like writing these parts and how it's supposed to feel is what's the most important thing in my opinion. So like when Bobby sends you a demo, does he give you the drum tracks or anything like he thinks about and then you just kind of make it like go, okay, this part calls for this. Sometimes it's a, a variation of that idea or sometimes mm -hmm. you write up something new if you feel it. So that's kind of like been my experience too with the bands I've been in where if we're using technology and, you know, like we said, progressive music, the more complicated it is. It's yeah. nice to be able to see because you know, um, also having the having the notation forces the people that are playing the melody to play it the same way every time. Yeah, totally. Which, has, which can be <laughs> difficult. Been there a few times. <laughs> um, yeah, Bobby writes. Um, Bobby mostly writes the album in Guitar Pro, and then he transposes it to, to guitar. So he like he writes what he thinks sounds good, and then if like whether it's playable or not or not is like not really even a factor at that point. And then he transposes it and learns it, and he's like, "Okay, this doesn't work. I need to figure this out." Same thing with me. So, like, if there's something where it's just not possible because I don't have six arms, um, I'll be like, "Hey, can't do this, but I'll, this is what I'll do," and we'll kind of go back and forth like that. Um, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good way to do things um, if you're good at communicating, which I am not. So uh, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it gets a little annoying for Bobby and all those guys because I'm like, I'm learning the stuff, but I'm just not telling them like what I'm doing at some point. So, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Man. And, you know, uh, I've experienced that firsthand when we were uh, learning the stoic suffering stuff. And yeah, yeah, John was super adamant about like there was like, and, and you know, and he's right. You know, you got to have a schedule and everything like that. And it's nice mm -hmm. to be like, you know, and it's a pretty big undertaking and pressing people you don't know on a personal level to like, you know, to do, you know, to be uh, accountable, if you will. Yeah. And I remember like, he was like, Oh, I want these videos, this and this a day. And I remember sitting there going before I met you going, is this Josh guy going to actually know the songs by the time we go to play them? Like I was <laughs> nervous, man. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. No, it's totally fair. Um, like the, I mean, I had already known James. Uh, I've known James for a long time. Um, so I think like he knew he definitely knew that I would have it figured out because he knows the deal with Cyborg. We never practiced together ever. So uh, me and Cyborg almost never. I think we've practiced less than 10 times total as a band in the last nine years. It, it, yeah, it's crazy. But it's just I, I, I just work better on my own. Like when it comes to learning, practicing, it's just it's so much easier for me to just sit down, play and not have four other people in the room like trying to like do different things so i can just focus you know what i mean because that's that's the best the biggest part is um oh that's what i'm looking for you want to make sure that you're like everything is exactly the same every single time you don't want like if you play too hard one night your hands will cramp and you have to like you have to be very very consistent if not 
the practice sucks and then you get to the live show and then the live show sucks so it's just it's i don't know that's why sometimes when they mess with me i'm like could you guys fucking not please <laughs> i'm trying to focus here and then i get bobby in my face like going like this i'm just like god damn it quit it <laughs> i get off <laughs> but it's it's uh it, it just adds to the show man those guys make me laugh so much when we play it's uh <laughs> thankfully they do it on some of the parts where it's kind of brainless and i don't have to think about it too much which is nice but a couple times they've gotten me and i'm just like you fucker well like what's well, another thing that's cool about your guys show is those light up vests <laughs> like those are pretty cool like me and jordan were standing there thinking that's what john wanted to do except for he just wanted to like or the leds and like in some sort of crazy outfit but that was cool like the light up vest you guys crazy had outfit piece- freaking guitar dude and a saxophone like where did all that come from like uh well so i joined the band in 20 uh 20 what's 2015 2016 was when i joined the band um and they always kind of just done like this costume sort of sort of style live like we just we just wanted to look ridiculous as often as possible it goes back to the whole like making fun of people taking it too seriously stuff like because we do take the music seriously there's I don't, I don't think anybody can can say otherwise but when it comes to putting on a show we're there to have fun and look stupid so the crowd can laugh and have fun like if people are smiling in the crowd when they're watching us that's that's when we know we're doing our job and that's just a that's just another part of it uh ian's dad worked at this place and he was like, do you guys want this to make you vest? I still have mine. It's upstairs. Uh, I just never wear it anymore because the the stick one time got caught in like a pocket and I dropped it in the middle of the set. And I was like, okay, never again. <laughs> but yeah, Ian's dad just uh, had a maid and we wore him for a whole run. I think it was with uh, Ember Throne and uh, Devil's Aluden, the dudes uh, up from Seattle. We, we wore him for that whole run. And since then, Ian's kept it kept it alive. But yeah, I, I decided it just wasn't the best for me. Uh, less less material around my body as possible is good for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're a stick dropping guy too, man. Yeah, I've seen it. My hands cramp a lot. <laughs> it's not it's not helpful. <laughs> no, yeah. dude. And, and Josh, you told me one time, dude, like to switch gears, like uh, mm. you auditioned for Testament, dude. That's freaking awesome what did what song did you play and what was that like man um so it was like i just got they were just like hey can you send us a video um it was uh, a buddy of mine who's a booking agent was like hey can you send me a video of you playing a song and i was like uh fuck so i i basically i went to my i listened to this song it was called uh centuries of suffering it's on their 2016 album it's uh it's not one of their bigger songs but it was the one that stuck out to me the most like they have a shit ton of great songs um and i just i just put their entire catalog on shuffle and just listen to it and when i found that song uh i just listened to it over and over and over again at work because i'm a fedex driver so just headphones on all day long just listening to music and uh i went to my practice space that night my buddy jared klein and uh who was with us um ah uh, he's gonna be so mad uh tony our buddy tony was with us jared recorded the audio uh, and I learned that song that night and recorded the audio that night and had it sent off at like two in the morning. Um, I mean, obviously I didn't get the gig, but it's still like, it's insane to even be considered for something like that, which is, which is fucking cool. Really? Oh, cool. Abs- absolutely, man. And you know, and you don't, you don't get the job unless you try and to yeah. even be asked is rad. So that's a super cool story. And, you know, I got to spend some time with you last summer in yeah. depth and, and uh, we saw some trials and tribulations. We saw a few things here and there. So for everybody that doesn't know, Josh and I were uh, in a band, hired to be in a band called Stoic Suffering, which is like a deathcore band. And John mm-hmm. Rivera is nice, super nice guy. James was in playing guitar as well. James yeah. Fraser, nice, super nice dude, good guy. And uh, freaking, we saw some stuff. And uh, Josh, what was the most memorable, if you can find one, what was the most memorable experience? about that whole thing the most let's let's break it down and say what was the most positive experience of that whole thing uh most positive experience was walking for sure for sure um getting to see kill switch uh kill switch engage is one of my favorite bands of all time getting to see them at walking and i totally forgot they were even going to be there um and i think 
I think me and James were walking around and then I heard uh they opened with Rose of Sharon and I was or no, it was my curse. And I just like I was like, James, we gotta go. I FaceTimed my friend Danny because like we that's like our that's like our lover song. <laughs> and I was like FaceTiming him, like, holy fucking shit, Kill Switch is playing. <laughs> it was it was it was one of the coolest, one of the coolest experiences of my life. That and uh um my same friend has has been, been a huge possessed fan his whole life. And uh, one night, I don't know if you remember this, but I stayed up with Jeff one night drinking wine till like four in the morning. And uh, we were dragging real hard the next day. But uh, I FaceTimed him and I was like, hey, you want to talk to Jeff for a little while? And I just like handed Jeff my phone. He said it was cool. I wasn't just like that weird dude that was like, hey, right. my, talk to my friend. Um, but he has he has uh, the OG possessed the very first possessed album on vinyl. And he was like, how do I get you to sign this? Where do I need to send it? <laughs> I just need it signed. And I was like, I I mean, talk to him, man. I think he got his address and stuff. I don't know if he sent it out though, but yeah, that uh so Valken was very cool. Worst, the worst part, um besides the driver almost dying inside the bus, uh <laughs> in the wheel well of the bus, I has to be when the hydraulics went out in the UK. And we were sitting there sweating our fucking balls off inside the, the vi- dude, that bus had to have been 110 degrees in the inside. It was so brutal, man. Dude, it was terrible. Like, no, none of the windows would open. You know, yeah. you could, could open a dude, I've been like, like a minivan, just open the door going down the highway. Like, yeah, you know, some sort of ventilation going on, but that was fucked. Like, we were slamming, dude, it woke us all up. I remember like bouncing up and down, and, like mm-hmm. catching air and, Claudia, it's almost fell out of his butt because he was right on top of me. And dude, he, I heard him go, you know what the, you know, and started screaming and hopped down. And like, they were, like I went downstairs and like everybody's standing there, like right with the ancient mariner, dude, just like dehydrated, yeah. sweating to death. It was crazy. Dude, we all had our shirts off and shit. We were all like basically in our underwear. It was so hot, dude. That was that was so tough. And they wouldn't stop too because uh, possessed had to fly to Finland, so we had to get back to the UK or to uh, London. I think it was London, right? Yeah, from Newcastle. We left from Newcastle and drove all the way, which was like a 10 hour drive, too. It was tough. It was a tough, tough experience. <laughs> what was uh what was your favorite experience? Was it uh Brutal Assault? Brutal Assault was pretty cool, man. And like crawling around with Bobby and like we went out to watch Immolation play and stuff like that. But dude, like the That's whole cool. thing was the whole thing was awesome. Even like stuff it like was. when we were walking around in Switzerland was rad. Yeah, dude. You know, like when we went to Cremona, we were walking around, dude, and that was cool. I mean, there's just so many, so many. For me, it was such a, I'm like for all of us, dude. Like, I think the coolest experience was probably, you know, going to Wacken was fucking cool. Like, um, you know, playing the shows was awesome too. Yeah, totally. You know, you know and I mm-hmm. think for me, the coolest moment was probably when we went on the ferry from Calais to or Dunkirk to uh, Dover was pretty rad, dude. That was sick. Like yeah, that man. was rad. That's cool. Fuck. Dude. It, I know it's like and there was just so much, dude. And like going to the cathedral in Cremona, you got super sick. You got like food poisoning or something like that, dude. I drank a fucking orange Fanta, and I fucking I was like, guys, I'm either gonna pee out of my ass or I'm gonna throw up in the next ten minutes, and I don't know which one it's gonna be. We gotta go, <laughs> and we were like in the middle of doing laundry. Uh, the fucking the uh, the pizza place we we're at, the fucking bathroom was basically just a hole in the ground, and I was like, dude this is going to go everywhere. Like I can't, I can't do this here. Like it's going to splash. It's going to get on my legs. I don't want that. So I am, I'm going to, I'm going to go. I think we just ran back to the laundromat and I just like stood outside the whole time. Dude, that was a tough, that was the weirdest. I've never got food poisoning like that before where it hits you like almost instantly. Like I took a sip of that Fanta and I was, I was done. I went like pale, felt like dog shit. It was, ugh. When we first got to Romania, me and Jordan got food poisoning. Dude, we went to a McDonald's and they don't cook their produce there and it was raw because I guess that's like a thing or something like they like steam their produce at McDonald's so I kill a bacteria. But this stuff came right out of the field of somewhere, dude. And we went, ate that. Like everything was cool, kind of. Then we went to have dinner at this place that John picked out and we were eating this, this like stroganoff type stuff. And I'm like, I took like two, I didn't want to be rude. I like, so I, you know, ate like four or five bites of it, dude. And I didn't sleep that entire night. I was puking like black stuff up. And that next day, like it I didn't sleep at all. We had already yeah. traveled for 36, 36 hours of travel to get there. 
super not feeling well. Didn't sleep. Super freaking hot. When we played that first show after we played, I blacked out on the couch upstairs. You know, I like literally like went out dude. for like ten minutes and like woke up going, "Oh, dude, did I die in Romania?" Like <laughs> it was crazy. That, dude, that fucking that travel day was so brutal. Like, remember we were sitting on the tarmac for like two hours because uh, there was like a mechanical failure or some shit. Uh, yeah, so, that was so tough, dude. Because we flew, we went, we were obviously in Reno, which was an experience. You know, I. Uh, was it was cool to go to Reno to visit, you know, and I got a lot of good naps in. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, then we flew to freaking Portland. Then we flew, yeah, we, we sat in Portland for like two hours because like yeah. a paperwork issue. And then, dude, when we when we landed in Frankfurt finally, like it had been like fourteen hours, dude. Then we had like a four hour layover in that airport in Frankfurt's freaking huge too. And like I remember going through like like the guards or whatever at the T their version of TSA like. Flying from like people went to like the back area of the airport, like where none of the water ran and all the lights were flickering and stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, like the guys were like going through all of our stuff. They took my Allen wrenches. They took us, they were going to take Jordan's uh, connecting rod for his kick pedals, but <laughs> it was crazy, man. But yeah, when we got to Bucharest, that I think everybody was just over it, dude. Like, I think I me know. and James, me and James just slept for two days. Like, we legit left our room to eat and that was it. We just sat in our room and did nothing else for two days. I don't blame you. Yeah, it was honestly, it was, uh, yeah, that was a whole experience. Just getting like landing, trying to figure out how the fuck we were going to get to our hotel was the whole thing. And then we like, I don't, I think me and James got the guy almost dropped us off at like some abandoned building that was like, it was like a mile away from our hotel. We were just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is like, all the all the things you see in like the horror movies, this is how it always starts. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh it was it was overall like it's funny to laugh about all the shit that happened now, but yeah, then I was like terrified. I'd never been in Europe in my life. I was just like Romania's fucking scary. There's all these abandoned buildings, people are driving so fast. <laughs> Dude, there's no rules. <laughs> yeah, there's no rules. it was crazy. Like when we were driving from the airport to our hotel. Which we all eventually made it to. Me and Jordan got there right away. The dude that the our driver with that guy was super cool. And he kind of told us what was up. Like, don't go here, don't go there, you know, avoid all the casinos and the mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff because they'll shake you down and worse. But anyway, we got to the freaking hotel. Dude, we drove faster than I ever have in my life, just <laughs> flying. And then we had that day off. We went Jordan and I went walking around, dude. And there's like cooling towers in the middle of town and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like Soviet era, like nuclear waste canal and we were walking around, dude. We went down this alley where there, there, were, there were these houses, man. And there were like these garage doors that were open. I'm like, dude, we need to walk in the middle of the street so they don't freaking nab us, dude. And like, you know, some terrorist action. I mean, I'm not sure. You never know. Like, I mean, yeah. that happens no, in Portland, no. dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, when we drove to the show, too, when we took the Ute Rivers or whatever, they don't even stop at the traffic lights in like a six way intersection. It's just like, like ants, dude. Everybody just like goes in the middle, and whoever the brave keep going. You like everybody else. Yeah. You know, like, dude, are you, is this yeah. worth? Is this worth your life? You know. <laughs> it, it, yeah. The, the driving was an experience. I was so happy to finally like that was my first tour on a bus ever. It was, dude. That is life changing. Like just being able to go to sleep whenever you oh, want. Dude. Lay and, down all the way, man. Yeah. Like, stretch dude. out. That's huge. Dude, were you in one of the bunks that was getting rained on? No, no, fortunately not. I think those were the ones in the front. I think like yeah, it was like me, John, James, uh, yeah, because it was like right when you walk up the stairs, I was right, yeah. in, like right in front of you, and then like there was like four bunks right there that were just like all the all the uh, <laughs> the shit from the AC was just like dripping into our bunks. We're like, what is what is happening? That might have been the worst bus in all of Europe. Like seriously, we one guy almost got killed. Yeah, you know, like they drove it like stuck under a bridge one time. You know, <laughs> the t-shirts went missing. Like the it, it was an experience, dude. But I think my worst experience was when we went to um, uh, freaking Aschaffenburg and we got there right, and I went upstairs. And I freaking uh, was super tired. So on the bed, there was like some candy, dude. And I'm like, oh, sweet, free candy. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, when you're on the road, you can see food, you eat it, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, so I ate like a bag of these candies, dude. And we went walking around town. And I remember we were all sitting there eating, dude. I was like super not feeling well. Like, I almost nodded out my food. And uh, we made it, obviously, we got to see some cool stuff, walked around, yada, yada. We went back to the freaking hotel, dude, in Jordan. 
like half an hour later was like, man, I don't feel good. He ate, those were like bags of like melatonin gummies, dude. And I ate a whole bag of them. So I didn't know it because I was in the swimming pool, like floating around, like, and I'm like, I don't feel good. Like, and so I stood up and I was like super dizzy. I'm like, <laughs> Mike, is it like, what's happening here? And so, yeah, man, like that was pretty scary. Cause I didn't know what the hell was going on, dude. That's awesome. Is that, that the, is that the spot where we went and walked around town and had us, uh, we all, all four of us were like walking around and we had, uh, what the fuck did I eat that I hadn't, I was like, it's, uh, was it, it was schnitzel is what I schnitzel. had. Yeah, 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 the schnitzel, the, dude, the fucking best food I've ever had in my life. Like the, I've, I don't think I've ever had a better food than schnitzel. Dude, it was good. Just like a thin chicken fried steak, man, with like some dude. lemon on it. Yeah. So like, per- it was perfect. Did you eat dinner with us that night too in the motel? Or that lady helped all of us get food because like everything was closed. Um, I think me and James, me and James were sitting upstairs and then uh, we came down like super late and everybody was just like, Oh, they brought us food. And we were like, Oh fuck. We were like trying to figure out how to get food this whole time. Right. Uh, but I think they like, they like saved a couple for us. So we, we got to eat. It was cool. Yeah. That stuff was pretty good. And that was an ex- that was like some dinner theater, man. It was uh <laughs> It was, a, was like it was a wild, it was a wild couple of days. The f- dude just being stuck at a hotel and having to call an Uber to get twenty minutes into town. Yeah, and everything closes like eight o'clock there too, which was crazy, man. Dude. <clears throat> yeah, Germany was cool though. I love Germany. Yeah, we went there like four or five times. That place we played Munich was pretty rad, dude. Uh, which one was Munich? It was like out, like it was like a garden venue, like all those like remember it had like uh, container cars and stuff like that, and like uh, there was like two, yeah. like it was like a festival type thing, like a smaller one that was it was like super humid, but we got there like late because dudes got lost. That's when we almost drove under the bridge. Oh, that's right. Okay, I remember now. I remember now. And they had like yeah, the yeah. green room was like up a, outside, like up some stairs, and the green room was actually had some good pop in there. That good pop. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> that was the spot where, uh, like, there was two venues, right? Uh, yeah. Possessed was playing in their own venue, and then we were in the other one. Yeah, which was, was which was weird. It was weird they split up the tour package like that. That was weird. I don't know. They, I think they had a couple of other like regional headlining bands in that with Possessed when they played. Yeah, it makes sense. And that's how it was. Like, and the place we played at in Czech Republic, what, in Zagreb or Zagreb, that place was freaking out of control too, dude. Like that was like some. Uh, that was like just, I mean, remember like a freaking uh, Tomas telling us to like turn the lights off on the bus because people were gonna snipe at us and stuff. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he was like fucking with us. He's like, we drive through Serbia. You gotta turn off lights. I was like, what the fuck? Hold on. There's no snipers on the mountains, are there? He's like, you can never be sure. <laughs> dude i don't doubt it and that guy was super cool man like totally calm he had never like freaked out and there were probably plenty of times he should have you know he, he got really pissed at the boys uh when we we pulled we told the drivers to pull over because everybody wanted to smoke he came down in his fucking underwear and was like screaming at everybody i was like i'm just drinking a coca-cola over here i'm, I'm not outside the bus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was me, Jordan, Bobby, Chris, yeah. and uh, freaking. And I remember he like opened the door and he just like, you know, and took everything and just like threw it in the bushes and was like, Are you blah, 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 like and yell at us in some Polish dialect? And then got <laughs> Bobby started, they were telling the bus driver to stop because somebody was going to crap on the floor. That's yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Dude, this guy's got a shit, man. Come on. <laughs> stop. Dude, God. I, I wonder how many people actually shit on the bus. I wonder. I know Claudius did. He told me. Yeah, I uh, I pin- I pinched a few and waited. I was I was just trying to be be the good a good the good guy. <laughs> it was hard, dude. That was a the whole uh, bus full of freaking uh, lunatics, is what that was. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could say other things, but I don't know how act- accurately describe it. Besides that, but those were a lot of fun, man. I was uh, I I I generally sleep a lot, uh, like. I go to bed very late usually, but I, when I do get to sleep, I sleep a ton. So I was like, every show we'd get there and I'd wake up like 30 minutes before doors or before, not doors, but before load in or whatever. And they'd just be like, come on, let's go. We got to, we got to load. And I'm just like, just napping. 
<laughs> well, you know, you know, and I got to say, because I was having to be there for all the times so we had to bring stuff into the building. And it was always nice, though, that there was help to set up the drum kit and stuff like that, dude. And I know that Jordan really appreciated that because I remember when we yeah, came home, he was like, that was super cool. Josh, you know, did that because, you know, not everybody freaking did help. And I think if there's a lesson to be learned, if you're going to do a real tour to help people, man, like to do stuff like that, be courteous and kind. Yeah, totally. That's that's just kind of a general uh, how I've always been on any tour, any show, whatever. Like, there's um, there's like there's four of you there to move all of this gear, so you might as well just help each other out. There's no nobody's. Uh, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely times when uh, like you just can't be there to help out. Sometimes you know you're like if you're not there, like getting food or something, or if you're like showering or like doing laundry. Like that's there. There's like there's, but if you're there, you might as well help out. Well, well yeah, you, you know, you don't usually like, disappear to go do those things though. Like when you're, uh, you know, everybody else is, you know, it's like known. You know, if like hey, let's not go hijack somebody that doesn't know any better than uh, yeah, yeah. take them on a wild goose. Oh, what do you mean? We didn't know. Yeah, it's like yeah, my grandma's yeah, yeah. a virgin. You didn't know. Fucking whatever, <laughs> dude. <laughs> whatever, uh, man. You're a pretty busy guy. Didn't mm-hmm. you have an? Uh, you're gonna tour with uh, someone in the list, right? I was I was slotted to tour with them, and then I uh, I hurt my knee, and sadly could not go on the run. Um, yeah, that was that was a heartbreaker because I love those guys and I love that band. Um, I, I I the set was already learned too. I was like I was ready to go. Just uh, I was just uh, like fine tuning some stuff, and I think I think I it was like a month a month and a half before we left. So I had plenty of time to like fine tune everything, get ready to go. And yeah, my knee just for whatever reason, um, I don't, I don't exactly, I don't exactly know what happened. Like I didn't tear anything. Um, just whenever I tried to play my knee, just like, it was just yelling at me the whole time. Like, Hey, something's, something's wrong here. <clears throat> but I basically, I, I called him immediately basically. And I was like, Hey, um, I'm going to give it a try for the next week and see how this feels. But if it's, if it doesn't go away, um, might have to find somebody else, which is the last thing I want to do because I love touring being on the road is like what I love to do. So, um, yeah, that was a, that was a heartbreaker. That was a heartbreaker. That was, uh, it was going to be, I think it was in fury, Sunny the lich. Uh, I forget who else is on that run. I think a uh, wormhole or, war- uh, Worm flesh, one of those two, one of the worm bands was on that run too. Um, uh, it's uh, oh, what's his freaking name? Um, we stayed with him in Baltimore. I can't remember his freaking name though. Um, Sanjay, Sanjay's band. Oh yeah, 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 Sanjay Kumar. Yeah, yeah, it was his his band was on that run too. Um, so I was yeah, I was really bummed out, but thankfully Tadpool uh stepped in and learned the songs pretty quick and that dude's a beast so he i know he did well so um yeah i got a couple things cooking right now um so just auditioning for auditioning for stuff at the moment oh there's one for october there's one for october that's pretty big a pretty big run i could talk to you afterwards about it but i can't obviously uh and then cyborg's announcing a run um this week sometime i think on monday maybe or next week um but that run's gonna be sweet <clears throat> um oop hopefully you guys couldn't hear that um <laughs> yeah yeah i just got a notification and it went off um but yeah i got i get I, i'm pretty i think i'm i steadily get work it's uh it's not like i don't have a tour every single month coming like get offered to me but it's like Every once, every once in a while, like something, something really cool comes along, and uh, yeah, it, it like the, all the stuff I'm having to learn right now is pushing me to like fix my technique and actually do it correctly instead of just powering through like I always have. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been switching to more of a French grip with my fingers um, to try and lessen the 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 toll it takes on my on my arms and my forearms and stuff. In my hands, especially because my 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 thumbs cramp so much when I play because I, I just try to hit so hard all the time. Uh, Sounds so, like you're wanting some gravity blast and stuff going on. <laughs> it's it's not it's not that fast. It is it is a deathcore band, but it's not it's not anything crazy like uh like that. But then uh, just doing the cyborg stuff, like 
Cyborg's got a couple of runs. Um, we're also going to be doing a run late September, and then uh, uh, this one in July that's about to get announced, which will be which will be really cool, man. Before that, I've done I've toured with Animus. I, obviously, I've toured with you. Um, I toured with Flub, which was really really cool. Got to I got to meet some of my absolute uh, idols on that tour. I got to meet uh, Ryan Williams, the uh, OG bass player from Black Dog Murder. Um, it, dude, I I saw him and I was like. You're like the fucking coolest human I've ever met. That's awesome, man. <laughs> he's so, I, dude, he's so great. Um, that all these, like, just being able to hang out with Gorod for a month was the coolest. Like, uh, I think did you you met Nico in London, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's like one of the nicest humans on planet Earth, and his laugh, I I dare anybody to not laugh when he laughs because it's it's just fucking it's hysterical. Great, he's a great dude. He loves to have have a couple of beers with the boys. Uh, they taught me some. Uh, they taught me some French uh, traditions when it comes to uh, sniffing, not necessarily illegal stuff, but just like sniffing random shit to give you a head rush. <laughs> it was it was fun. <laughs> basically, yeah. it was basically paint thinner. It was fun. Good times. <laughs> oh, how about ether kind of stuff? <laughs> it was, dude. It was. It was. I was like, you know what? We're 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 here. We're doing it. I don't. I don't care. And I ended up having a blast. So it was. It was great. Well, you know, I mean, when in Rome you do, you know, what the Romans do, and you know, you just gotta make sure you know when to stop. That's the hard part sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was, uh, I just remember there was a point when I was like, my head really hurts. I need to go to bed because I was just over and over again, just hanging with the boys, having a good time. And uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> and <fuck laughs> it. my, the drummer from Gora Carol comes upstairs and he's like, "What is Josh? Where's Josh?" I was like, I'm sleeping, man. <laughs> Tired. <laughs> <laughs> you French guys are crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they are crazy, man. People at the like, well, that's the cool thing, like going to other countries and mm -hmm. you know, other people's cultures, man, is like it, it you know, it, uh, you learn a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. And uh, you know, there's some scary places in the world and some of the yeah. nicest people come from those places, so that's always cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember you remember Croatia? Yeah, it's a grab. That was those a wild. Some... Dude, those people went into the green room and uh, cleaned us out, man. Like, I remember going in there to get food and, like, opened the pot to get some of that soup. And I was like, dude, it's gone. Yeah. They're like, here, let's have a beer. Like, all the beer's gone. You yeah, know, I think they, we... they took, like, everything. That was crazy. I think we left with less than what we came Yeah, with. they, like, went on our bus, <laughs> took our beers off. <laughs> exactly. I, I remember specifically that shower being like the sketchiest shower that we got. We had the whole tour. Dude, I had a rash on my legs when we went to Switzerland from that thing. I was like, dude, like what? Like some sort of flesh eating bacteria. Dude. And Tom, Tom Moss is like, just pee on your legs. He's like in the pool. Like, <laughs> we, just, we just pee on our legs. I'm like, dude, that's not going to work for this one. I remember like when we went to Martini, dude, I was sitting there just like terrified. Like, dude, am I going to like have like, what's this like gangrene going on me or something? But. <laughs> I was able to accurately, through my fear, describe I needed some Neosporin to these people at the gas station or whatever. The <laughs> pharmacy wouldn't sell me, and he needed a prescription. And, yeah, it went away like a week, three days, no, well, like a week later, dude. And, but, yeah, that place was super intense. It was super muggy, gnarly. You know, and, like, I know what it feels like. We know what it feels like to have to, like, present your passport. And I remember when we went through Bulgaria, they deported Vlad. Remember that? Yeah. They deported his ass. I don't remember where he went, but he like met us in like Holland or somewhere down the line. But dude, like when we went through that one border checkpoint and that lady was sitting behind the glass window, dude, I could feel like the, uh, the, uh, the just like she was like stalking us with her eyes. Serbia. Yeah, it was crazy. But Josh, awesome talking to you, dude. Yeah, man. Tell me what, tell us what you want to say anything before we wrap this up, man. Uh, just check out my band, Cyber Octopus um we just released two songs in the last uh two months and we're i, th I believe we're going to be releasing like a bunch of songs this year so our album is going to come out in september uh we announced that a couple weeks ago pre all the pre-orders and stuff are ready for that um you can get them at silentpendulum.com uh that's where that's our label's website uh we have new vinyls uh new shirts all that stuff so check all that stuff out it looks cool uh this album cover is my favorite we've ever had. So I'm very excited about it. <laughs> nice, man. And yeah. what nicer, cooler people, talented 
people to buy merch from and listen to their music. It's really good. I know these guys and they're not bad. I'd tell you if they were, but no, they're super awesome. And Josh, <laughs> thank you for freaking stopping by, dude. You're the man. It's Thanks, nice man. working with you. Yeah, uh, you too, man. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. Yeah, man. Let me know. I'm totally down. And uh, I got some stuff going on myself. Hopefully mm -hmm. ironing everything out. We got our new records coming out with vocals. Uh, just about done with everything. And it'll be a relief getting it all tied up. But uh, anyway, when I'll have some uh, some uh, proofs, I'll send you so you can check it out. Yeah, please do. Please, 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 please. Hell yeah, man. Right on, Josh. Cyber Good. Octopus. We'll check it out. It's nice talking to you, bro. Hi, brother. See you later. Later.